Hi, I'm Jane and I'm about to tell you why a few of the urban wine myths that are out there are a load of old rubbish. There's no question that there are certain wines that were created to be discounted. So they have a deliberately inflated price to start with just so that when they're discounted down well going, oh, isn't that a bargain? Um, when that's not necessarily the case. So be wary of wines that you see discounted all the time. I'd definitely like to dispel this myth that a single great wine is superior to a blended wine because some of the most expensive wines in the world are blends and there's actually a real craft in blending two or more grape varieties together and making them taste really good. The room temperature of old is not the room temperature of today. So I often stick my red wines in the fridge for a little bit of time just to give them that extra edge. And that can often make them really fresh and really crunchy and just really gives them an extra sort of vibrancy. I'm not talking about much older wines, wines that you might want to decant, but for early drinking, young, fruity wines, then that's always a good thing to do. White wines, well, yes, I would serve them straight from the fridge if A, they're really horrible and nasty because serving them really cold doesn't stand the flavour, but also if they're meant to be young and fresh and zesty and you're eating them with a plate of delicious fresh seafood or something like that, then yes, again, serve them from the fridge. But if they're super complex, quite expensive wines and or a little bit older, then what's really good is just to let them open out of it. When it comes to wine glasses, I'm pretty relaxed about them in general, but there are certain types of wine glasses that people think are the be all and end all. The most obvious one is the old champagne flute myth. They're quite useful because you can see the bubbles rising and it all looks very pretty and jazzy. In terms of appreciating the wine, they're not so great because champagne is quite a complex wine and a lot of sparkling wines, not just champagne, are quite complex. And so the tall thin flute doesn't allow you to get the aromas or get the most out of them. Sherry has moved on. I can't say this enough. So people do still have a little bit of this image about it being the sweet, syrupy, sickly stuff that Granny keeps in her cupboard, brings out Christmas time, puts it back in her cupboard, brings out the same bottle 12 months later and you're going, oh my gosh, what is this? Um, it's not about that at all. Um, most of it, a lot of it is dry, zesty, refreshing. It's massively food friendly. It's still great value for money because people still don't appreciate it as much as they should do. Do you know what? There are some fantastic, and I mean really fantastic, red wine and fish pairings. I mean, obviously you've got to have a bit of common sense about it. You don't go for some massive, tannic, chewy, heavy thing. You go at the lighter end of the red wine spectrum. You know, Riesling is the darling grape variety for a lot of people in the wine community. I think partly because we feel like we want to sort of protect it because we know that it is one of the most beautiful complex grapes in the world when it comes to making wine and yet it's still really marred by this image as people always thinking it's going to be sweet which absolutely is not the case so those are a few of the wine urban myths that are out there but there are loads more if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about wine and or wine with food then pick up a copy of my book which is coming out very very soon